button. So George and uh, Jim, uh, thank you very much again for being here. I do appreciate it. If nobody knows anything else about George, George is Joe Malarkey. If, uh, if you haven't gone and, and YouTubed or looked him up and watched some of the uh, amazing, amazing videos, George has put on a character called Joe Malarkey, the world's worst uh, motivational speaker. And it, it's fabulous. It's just such a great, um, ironic uh, conversationalist. You know, he, he does a, you do a great job of pointing out the highlights of what people do right and wrong. So that, that's, that's fabulous. 20-year um, professional speaker, and you're a professional 20, uh, 80 percenter. I am that. I am that. That's the reason why I hooked up with Jim. Who I, I, I'll be curious before we get too deep. Uh, can we? Can you give us a sense, Curry, of how many people saw us pr present in in uh, Atlanta? Absolutely. Or on, on streaming. Absolutely. If you guys go into the chat, use the. Uh, <laughs> uh, there is the yes no options or the raise hand option. If you watched, or if you were at the event in Atlanta or Miami. Um, give us a hands up and we'll see how many people. Yeah. I just don't want to, uh, belabor stuff that most everybody is familiar with as we, as we go through this. The hands are being raised as we're, as we're saying. So there's going to be, I believe there's going to be some people who, who did see it and, okay. um, but I, but I want to, uh, I, I just want to make sure we definitely talk about sure. why. I, why I, I actually set this up. So, okay, absolutely. But, but you, you absolutely created this concept based on your own personal experience with creating that chain. Right. Uh, it kind of goes back to uh, the, the original creator of kind of started this whole thing. And we just kind of connected some dots, uh, Jim and I, uh, and let me just say this, we're going to toss around the, the, the terms 80 percenter and 20 percenter, and I am an 80 percenter, and we'll define that. Jim is a 20 percenter to the max. Uh, Jim, everything from uh, his paper route, which he was number one in the company, to uh, building, a, taking $500 and parlaying that into a $15 million company. Uh, to being named distributor of the year of two different or two network marketing companies. So under, so while I'm on one end of the spectrum of the 80%, Jim is on the other. So where, where this came from is the, was, was a thing that I started researching, which was the Pareto principle. And most of you in, are going to be familiar with this. And this is the, the classic 80, 20 rule. And it basically says that 80% of your results are going to come from 20% of your activities. That's, that's kind of the, the framework of it and, and the way it works in the real world. And it's, it's astonishing how pervasive this is, is in a sales oriented company, 80% of the sales are going to come from 20% of the salespeople in a church. 80% of the, the contributions are going to come from 20% of the parishioners. Uh, in, in a company that 80% uh, of their, their customers are just going to contribute 20% of their income, whereas 20% of their customers are going to be contribute 80. And so the thing that fascinated me about this was I realized looking at this 80, 20 thing, especially in the history, I had a history with network marketing and I was never successful. Uh, and I realized I was in the 80%. I was in the group that did not perform nearly as much as the others. And so the thing that caught my attention was most of the studying done, most of the research done on this 80, 20 thing, was from uh, the top view down. It was companies wanting to know how to get those 20% performance, how to get those 20% customers that generate all the income. And the thing that hit me was, I'm at, I think I'm in the 80%. Why? What's the difference between me and Jim, who is a 20% performer that generates 80% income? Hey, George, can I, can I interrupt you for Absolutely. just a second? Absolutely. Let, let me, I, yeah, I was... I was going to let's go back to Jim for just a second before we jump into all of the details. Um, Jim, you, you have, uh, he, he already gave you this great bio, man. You've done some amazing stuff. 
You've created incredible businesses. Man, you've been on QVC 25 times. Uh, I, I don't know if they just keep inviting you back because they don't have any other guests. Uh, do, are there, is there anybody else who is inventing anything on the show? What, what is it that you were showing on QVC, Jim? Well, uh, my partner and I invented a uh, product. Uh, it was just a little computer peripheral that sat in your desk that held a cord of a mouse so that when you went to use the mouse, the cord didn't get hung up in your desk. And uh, yeah, I appeared about 25, 30 times. We sold millions of them on, on QVC. And it was, uh, of course, they went wireless, so they went that whole business. But, uh, uh, but it, was a, it was fun. I'd, I'd travel from Phoenix to uh, Westchester, Pennsylvania, go on TV for eight minutes, turn around and come back, and it was worth every, every minute, so. Wow, that's, that's awesome. And, and then on top of all that, you even, you joined network marketing companies. What yeah. attracted you to network marketing? Well, I own my own traditional business, which you kind of alluded to. And I had two of them. One I built to about 15 million and one I built to about four and a half million. And I sold them and retired and, and in my 40s. And I get out here in Phoenix and I go, okay, I don't play golf well enough that I even want to play every day. What do I do next? But I wanted, but I love building a business, but I didn't want all the headaches associated with building a business either. And uh, network marketing just, I mean, it, it offered absolutely everything that I ever wanted in a business. Uh, all I had to do was market it. They took care of all the paperwork. So it worked out well. It was a, it was a nice fit for me. That is awesome. And that's really exactly, I think, what a lot of people, you know, you don't want the headache of the brick and mortar and rent and electric bills and stock and everything else, and you allow somebody else to do it. Actually, uh, uh, we had a pretty large team, and, and uh, one of my sons, who, by the way, was the first person I ever enrolled in network marketing. He went on to become distributor of the year as well. So that was kind of a nice thing. But my son had actually hired George for an event. And I drove down just to, uh, you know, hear it. I sat in the back with my, my wife and my dog. And, uh, and uh, when George got done, I go, and I don't laugh at many comedians, but I, I just, I think he's one of the most talented people I've ever met in my entire life. And, and I remember going up to him afterwards and saying, George, if you ever need a straight man on stage, let me know. And here, 10 years later, he calls me and he says, I need somebody. And I go, uh, George, I'm retired, you know? And, and I didn't know that George was in the, I mean, even at the time, I didn't know he was in the Speaker's Hall of Fame. I didn't know he appeared on 60 Minutes or to tell the truth. All I knew is that I did, that he sucked at network marketing. And I never could figure it out why he was so bad. You know, I mean, he had all that stage present and all the database. And, and here it is 10 years later. And uh, he said, well, let me tell you why I was bad at it. Maybe we can correct it. So that's how we got together. Yeah. Well, it is incredible that, that two people, uh, you know, can connect from, you know, around the country, around the world and, you know, create a friendship, create that, you know, that relationship that turns into a business partnership. And I, I think that network marketing has a very, very strange way of making that happen with a lot of people, people who've never met before and then take that to a whole nother level in terms of business and friendship. So, but to jump into the reason why we're having this is because of the consistency chain. George's book, um, actually, I, I've seen George talk and tell a lot of this story twice now, and I couldn't get enough, so I read the book. And when I got back from my cruise, I read this while I was on a cruise, so uh, thanks for distracting me from the beautiful water and all the fun stuff that was going on. But when I, when I read this, I will tell you that I came back excited to work with my team and the 80 percenters who um, I wanted to help them do one thing, just one daily consistent action. And then I screwed that up already, but I, I will, we'll, you know, I, I've got to work on it myself. I've got to work on it myself. But um, I'm going to let one of you jump in here and talk about, um, George, get back into the Pareto principle and how, you know, you discovered this, this pathway. Well, uh, the, the, uh, 
the thing was you could look at you could look at Jim or I, and it it's we seem to have a lot of commonalities. I mean, we were you know the, the you look at the eighty twenty and each each group has intelligent, smart, uh, educated, talented, knowledgeable people, and for some reason one group does really really well, and the other group struggles. The eighty percent struggles, and. When you eliminate all the commonality, what it came down to for me was simply this, and my experience bore this out. The 20% high performers do simply what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, on an unbelievably consistent basis. And the 80% like me, we know what needs to be done, we just, for whatever reason, the reason that I didn't understand, we don't do it consistently. And the deeper we dug, and that's when I talk about us kind of connecting some dots, uh, we connected a dot to the famous marshmallow study, which I don't really want to go into deeply here, but what it does is it gives us the understanding of why we're different. And we are literally, our brains are wired differently. And this shows up in testing of kids younger than five years old, and it holds up throughout their entire lives. That people like me are challenged to delay gratification, to set goals and achieve them, to stay in consistent action on anything. And that was the challenge. And that was what uh, I didn't overcome. It's what Jim is a master of. I mean, Jim, Jim, talk about for a second just about the way you built your business. You didn't, I mean, you, it wasn't massive action. No, it wasn't massive action whatsoever. Um, in fact, uh, yeah. Probably, uh, and I think it's better to do something on a consistent basis, on a daily basis, rather than do something, you know, something real strong, real hard, one or two days, and then take three or four off. So, and even with the network marketing business, Corey, you you know that if you look at the eighty twenty, I mean, just look at you know twenty percent of the people that give you eighty percent of the production, and you can even take that down further. Twenty percent of the twenty percent is around four people. And, and that coincides exactly. I know a lot of people on this call are, are, um, are proponents of um, Dale Calvert, and, uh, which I love his material. Absolutely love the guy. And uh, he'll tell you that it's the top 3%, 4%, right? And those top 3 or 4%, they don't need, uh, I mean, they, they don't need any hand-holding. But that other, that other group, that other, well, he calls it 27%, we, talk, we call it 17%. Uh, that's the group that uh, we feel we can really help by by starting a consistency chain and have them doing something on a daily basis. When I ran my my copier business, I had a, a photocopier company for years and, and sold out to a company called Icon. And I required my salespeople and myself just to show the machine once a day, just once a day. And uh, that consistent uh, activity uh, led to us being pretty significant, pretty pretty large size company. Is that what you were referring to, George? Yeah, yeah. And and let me just say this too. Uh, ha having spoken to a few groups now, what we've seen is that we have uh, after the after the event's over, we have a lot of the people who would self-identify as the eighty percent come up to us, and it's very, very it's it's all hugs and kisses because we have validated their experience. Well, well, I didn't get a hug or a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, in the wrong, you're in the wrong line. Oh, okay. Um, it's the leadership has a little bit of a challenge with this because it calls into question a lot of things that have been the way business has been done, and uh, the reality is the leaders are gonna they're gonna lead. They're gonna people like Curry. It, it it wouldn't matter what we say or did. He's gonna he's gonna continue to to knock it out of the park. It's people like me that would struggle. And the things, and the thing that made it tough for the for the leaders is to to kind of uh, take in the fact that what worked for them, what worked so good for Curry, I can't get it to work for me, and so there's a disconnect there. And, and that's very frustrating to somebody like Curry or or myself or any other. You know, most of the people on this call are, are twenty percenters. They're leaders. It's frustrating to to bring somebody on board and not have them be successful when you've done everything you could, you're showing them everything that you've done and it's just not working. So it's very frustrating. So it's, uh, and when George and I initially sat down, he said, well, Jim, I'm not wired the same way. I mean, that was a new concept. I just thought 
you know, he didn't have a big enough why, or, oh. he, or he was lazy, or he wasn't disciplined enough, or he was, well, there's probably a lot of truth in all that, actually, George. But, uh, but you when know, I started to realize how many people that I brought on, and I personally brought on over 550 people in my last company, and I, and I look back now and look at how many people I, I, you know, I could have helped if I was just a little bit smarter, you know, and looked at it differently. But it's, yeah, it's not a matter of being smarter. It's just a matter of being exposed to some new material. Because when we talk about our, the 80% are wired differently, that's not a metaphor. I mean, it's literally, physically, our brains are wired differently. The good news is we can rewire our brains. I was just watching a TED Talk from a, from a, a neurological uh, scientist, and she was talking about this unbelievable ability through neuroplasticity that we can literally rewire our brains. We can change the way we think and we can move ourselves from that 80% into the 80% inconsistency into that 20% consistency, which is the most exciting thing I'd ever heard. I was just watching Judge Judy. <laughs> to, the, to the point where I, when I tested this out, uh, I started working out and I got the, I got the killer flu this last month that finally stopped my streak at above 500 workout days in a row. Oh. And the, the, so, so A, I'd never been consistent. And through this technique that we used, I became consistent. And the other thing, which is the, then the bad news is, wow, the, ste- the streak broke. But that's not really bad because I had five days off. And guess what I did? I started again. And I still have the same momentum I had before. So it's, it's, that part of it is really exciting. So let me just say this for the leaders. It's possible that the leaders don't need what we're talking about, other than the fact you desperately need to understand this so you can help people in your group and you can help people in your family. I mean, people that you know and love. Not everybody in your family is going to be a 20 percenter. And uh, you see a lot of people, family dynamics, people that are butting heads because why is this so easy for me and so hard for you? Jim, tell them that story about uh, your, your daughter-in-law. Well, my, uh, my son, uh, Adam, married a beautiful girl named Sarah. And, and, uh, and they, have, uh, they have three kids. And, uh, and, and anyway, Sarah has been wanting to write a book for a long time. And she was over here uh, a little over two months ago. She was here, and we were we were talking, and and she was fascinated by my my consistency chain chart that I had going. She says, "Oh, I need to start when I want to write a book." And and uh, I said, "Well," and she was about ready to hire a coach actually, uh, which was around twelve thousand dollars a year. And I looked at her. And I said, "Sarah, I'll do. I'll coach you for free." And um, and my son looked at me like, thanks, dad, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and, and, she, and I said, if you start, if you want to start writing, I'll, I'll help you do it. And she said, well, she said, love to, I, I, you know, they were dropping off Hudson, who was our little grandson, who was two and a half, and they were going out on a date night. And uh, she said, I'll start it tomorrow. And I mean, I, I love her. And I, I said, absolutely, you can start it tomorrow if you want. And I came back in the office and I was puttering, whatever. And I went back out. She was still there. And I go, you know, Sarah, I go, if you want to start tomorrow, I I don't think I can coach you. I said, you need, and she says, what? And I said, you need to start tonight. And she said, well, we're going out to dinner. And and she said, I don't have a journal or anything. And I said, Sarah, just go to the computer and download a calendar. All right. And, and I, and start writing. She says, well, I don't have time. I said, Sarah, can you write one sentence? And she said, well, yeah, I can write one sentence. I said, so do it. You need to start tonight, today. And uh, in fact, she was here, George, uh, last, y- yesterday, and she's now got over 60 days consecutively. She has, um, you know, she's written a half dozen chapters in her book, and it's, it's so gratifying. And uh, so you can do things other than, you know, obviously work-related, but all of us that are even 20 percenters, there's certain areas that we're better at than another and right. i mean whether to be asking for referrals or social you know being on social media or or follow up or whatever pick one area that you want to improve in and use that as your consistency chain so so and it's just uh, i mean it's a perfect example of of in jim's case being able to help somebody i mean jim's a 20 percenter but he was able to help somebody that just struggled 
in this one area that she really wanted. It wasn't a matter of uh, she didn't have a big enough why or that she wanted to or she was passionate about. She just couldn't get started. She couldn't see the path to start. And, um, and now this she feels better about herself every day, George. Yeah. I mean, she wrote us an amazing testimonial that it's just it's changed the way she looks at herself. She feels differently about herself because she's doing what she was intended to do. Um, can I can I ask a question in the middle absolutely. of all this? So you know, I I live with that that why, right? Like the the big enough why. And when when Jim said that, I was I was about to butt in right before he used that word. And um, you know, in all of the the network marketing training, all of the events that we've been to, I mean, it's preached. You know, if you don't, if your why doesn't make you cry, and if you don't have the big enough why, and all of the but but hearing hearing George talk about, you know, it has nothing to do really with your why because your thought processes are different regardless. You know, uh, each one of us have, I mean, we, we're all from different different parts of walk parts of walks of life, right? It, we, we're not built the same. But from a 20 percent, uh, and I was trying I was telling Jim this, I believe no, it was not it was. Uh, um, the other speaker, I, my brain just shut down. I, I don't believe that I was originally a 20 percenter. Right. Like uh, I got started and it took me a very, very long time to get going. And then once I got into it and figured it out, it just kind of flipped. And, and so my, my question, since we do have a lot of um, business builders in this room, people who are at least attempting and they're, they're showing up because they're um, excited. What, if you could give a tip either from both George and Jim, one tip of a consistent action for business building. I mean, if you have a, an opinion or have a, you know, from both of you, could I, could I get an idea of what both of you would do as a consistent action daily for business building i'm gonna let jim go with this okay uh yeah you know it's sometimes when you've built a large business you get very complacent too curry and and you and you go away from the things that made you successful so um i have a consistency chain as it deals with prospecting and um, as far as one of my chains is that uh i have to talk to have one meaningful conversation every day with somebody about a product right and it can be the you know the acerbia product or it could be the consistency I, I by the way i love this product i think it's really going to help george and i you know promote our website so i, I love the product um so i started a consistency chain where i just want to have one meaningful conversation every single day and then you realize that some days you don't have a meaningful conversation especially if you're part-time or got other things going on or you, you know something happens life gets in the way so then I, I adjusted mine a little bit. And, and mine is simply, I have to reach out to 10 people a day or talk to one, whichever comes first. And I can reach out very easily because I could reach out with an email, a phone call, go to a networking event, uh, Facebook messaging, whatever. I can get 10 done pretty quickly. So that's how I do it from a business standpoint. And I found by doing that, my, my pipeline is so full that I, you know, I, I can't get through all the calls every day. That's how I use it for from a business standpoint, from a prospecting one anyway. Right. I know George, I probably that wouldn't be for you, but no, I mean I've the my, I mean I've got a chain related to our speaking business that I have uh in the book I talk about Pomduros, which is just a specified amount of time that you're gonna spend on a task, and it's really a good uh, tool to use when a task is too big to get done in a day or a week or whatever. And the tendency see, as you look at it and it's, I, I can't, I, I can't get started. It's just too big. And for instance, uh, when a real, a real practical Palm Duro that I did the other day was my taxes. I, it's just something I hate. And, and I just said, just 25 minutes, just 25 minutes, just do 25 minutes, dude. You, by the time you're 25 minutes, you do this day after day, you're going to be done. It's going to be April 15th. Everything's going to be done. And the reality is that once it's much like uh, uh, Jim's daughter-in-law who will sit down and write for five minutes and looks up and it's an hour and a half, the same thing. You, you get 
the hardest part is to start. And you start, and, and I didn't spend 25 minutes on taxes. I spent about 10 hours because I just wanted, once I was in the flow of it, I wanted to get it done. So, uh, but this brings up a really interesting point in, uh, in we talk about it in the give me three days. Uh, there's kind of a three part process in that define or decide on the area of our lives that we want to really focus on and then define that activity. And we've seen, uh, Jim and I had a chance to go back to a group that we spoke to earlier this year, and we noticed two things that people were having a challenge with. And one of them was people would decide, I want to focus on my business, and then they would define an activity, and the activities fall in these 80-20 categories too. There are some activities that are 20%, you spend 20% of your time on, they bring back 80% of the results. And so you want to be really, really careful and, and go talk to people uh, in your business that have been successful and find, really nail those activities that are the key activities. I've got to believe in, in, a, in a network marketing situation, uh, prospecting and inviting are going to be, I mean, that's kind of the lifeblood. So what Jim was talking about, that's going to be an activity that's going to generate, and you were talking about it, it fills your pipeline and generates outsized results. So whatever it is that you pick, pick something that it's going to matter. If you're, if you're able to keep this chain going and do this, pick something that's really going to have impact. Yeah, it, so it's, easy, results. it's easy. Um, uh, I mean, I remember sitting down and saying, I'm going to spend 45 minutes a day on, on personal growth, just reading something that uh, dealing with uh, personal growth. And the first day I did my 45 minutes, the second day, I mean, I had things, I had an early morning appointment. I had to I mean, just, you know, other things came up and I couldn't do it. And I came back home and I didn't get to write victory on my calendar. I mean, it was a zero on the, on the calendar. And I felt terrible. And the next day it looked even worse. So I readjusted. It doesn't, it doesn't make any difference what you, you know, you have to have the art of showing up before you, you, you know, you, you do the, the task. And, and I rewrote it and I said, I need to spend five minutes a day on personal growth. Well, five minutes I could do easily. And as a result of sitting down and just, starting the five minutes, I got the 45 minutes done. And uh, so it's, uh, it's not about the uh, performance, it's about the practice. And I think that's what we have to keep in mind. Just start it, you can change it later. I mean, you can intensify it you know, later on, whatever that activity is. Right, don't be afraid to start small because what, I mean, we're literally, the, the most important thing in the beginning for people like me is I'm literally rewiring my brain to be consistent. And that's, that's my goal, because once I develop this consistency skill, I can apply it to anything, and I can, I can scale it up or scale it down as need be. But uh, So don't be afraid. You know, when we were talking to a, a gentleman earlier today, and, and, and Jim was talking about reaching out to 10 people a day. And it, for me, my 80%, I would've, I would've, that would have scared me to death. I'm like, I, there's no way I can reach out. And then he explained how he did it. I was like, okay. But if, I, but if you told me I had to take, make 10 phone calls, outbound cold calls every day, I'm out. I'm going to have to find something else that I'm going to do because that ain't going to work for me. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. If you told me I had to do one, I'm, I'm, there's going to be bourbon involved, but I can probably do that. <laughs> but, but 10, there's no way. So, you know, scale it, scale it down to something that you feel that stretches you a little bit. <laughs> stretches you just a little bit, but you still feel confident. Well, yeah, I, I can totally do that. Yes. So, so that's, that's one of the things that we ran into, we saw in this group that we talked to, there were some people that picked activities that, okay, yeah, it's, that's good, but man, it's not the best thing you could have been doing. You know, pick something that's really going to have an impact. And then the second thing that we saw, and we've noticed this with uh, some folks that we've talked to from the survey event, the group that we spoke to a big real estate uh, company and the people who had the biggest struggle with this, the 80% people like me who had the biggest struggle with, with this consistency chain and it all came down to one thing and that is they didn't start. They didn't start. I mean, it's, it's, it's a classic putting off till tomorrow. Matter of fact, we're in development of an app right now 
And when you, you're going to download the app. And if you don't start in the first 24 hours, it's going to go away. Because that's how important it is. It, the, 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 I mean, going back to the story of Jim and his, his uh, uh, daughter-in-law, that was the key. Yeah. Making her start now, start tonight. If there's anybody on this call that, that, is, that has been exposed to this material, and you know what? Until I read the book, I just don't feel like I want to. Until something, until something, until something. No, there's no until something. It's tonight. Now, as soon as this thing ends, figure out what you want to do that's going to make an impact and start. And if it's prospecting, and if you have to start with reaching out to one person, make it one. And you can create, you know, you can change it, you know, as, as you go along. Once you get a few days, and I'll, I'll grab this. I don't know if you can see it, Kurt. Curry, but this is my calendar. And every day I, I put either victory in, George puts an X, I put in victory. I just think it sounds better, all right? And every day I look at this, just like George can look at his wall behind him, you feel good about yourself because you've got all these small little victories. And, and, and they just add up to a point where you say, yeah, I am, uh, this is worth the effort. I'm capable of doing this. You start seeing results. You start seeing momentum. Yeah. I mean, Jim, Jim is a classic 20 percenter who had literally just kind of one area of his life that he had a challenge getting a hold of. And tell, what's your experience? Well, you know, Curry, I can look back at, I have my original set of goals back from 1972 on my wall, okay? So I've been writing out goals for a long, long time. The only Christmas gift I ever asked of my kids was their goals in writing. And so I've been very goal oriented. And if you look back at my goals, you can see where I've had weight loss on that, on my goal sheets for years. I mean, for years and years and years. And it's just reached the point that I failed so many times that I just, I've just given up. And when George said, well, what's one area that you could really focus on that would be important to you? Mine was, was weight. So uh, I started a consistency chain on, on Friday the 13th you know, in October. And uh, it's been, it's been uh, I can look at my phone, I think it's been 164 days. And I have actually walked three miles a day for 157 days. Now, I missed seven days. I have great excuses for those seven days. Once, once was the, on Super Bowl Sunday, I was in mourning that my, <laughs> my Patriots lost, and I didn't feel like doing anything. But in fairness, uh, in fairness they took the day off, too. So don't feel bad about that. <laughs> I'm a little deflated. Don't go there. Okay. <laughs> But, um, <coughs> excuse me, as a result, I have now walked, you know, almost 160 days doing three miles, a minimum of three miles every day. And I go, gosh, I, I feel good about it. I feel good about myself. And I was so tempted as a 20 percenter to start adding four or five other little chains going along with it. But I, I've reached the point now where I said, okay, I've done it enough. So I come back some days and I don't even mark it off my calendar because it's just I don't even think about it. So now I've started eating healthier. I started that chain about uh, two weeks ago, where I have to eat eat better. And uh, but it's it's amazing. It's nothing else has worked. So I figure, well, why not try this? It worked for George. Maybe it worked for me. And the last time you went into your doctor, your I mean, they noticed the difference. Oh, my blood pressure has been one seventy over ninety five or a hundred and. I went back uh, about a week ago because I've got bronchitis, so I apologize for coughing. But I, I went back and it was uh, 133 over 70. And, and he said, hey, you've lost some weight. And, I, and he says, your blood pressure is good. And I'm going, really? This is happening? This is working? I mean, my goodness. Thank you, George. Congratulations. Thank yeah, you. it was, I mean, it was not, that, that certainly was part of the goal, to be healthier. You know, to see the blood pressure come down, the weight come down. But he got there just by focusing on one simple yeah. action a day. Yeah. You know, that was that was the thing. It was something he could do. And, and and I've been in Jim's office, obviously, and and to see the goals literally going back for 40, 50 years. And this is a goal that's been up there. And it took this slight change in thinking to actually make progress in that goal that's been a challenge for 40 or 50 years. I mean, that's amazing. Now, George, just to jump in, 
I think in, in my own personal experience over the, over the years, and I'm not going to take up too much more of your all's time, um, but uh, my personal experience over the years, I, I actually feel like uh, I'm the kind of guy who actually never had any goals. Like I was, uh, you know, small town, no opportunities in life, couldn't afford college, had no dreams of being anything other than just a survivor. You know what I'm saying? And, and so um, getting to a point where I discovered network marketing uh, was the point that I discovered goal setting and discovered having a bigger vision for my future. And so it was, it's, it's, you know, we all, like you said earlier, we, we all come from different places and having to figure out that wiring um, and it's, it, it's that, that happy balance. So I, I will tell you, Jim, Jim sent me a, a lovely card for uh, announcing that I was going to, uh, uh, that I started my own personal chain and promptly broke it. So I, I have to, uh, I, I decided I personally would walk my dog uh, two miles a day and I did one day and the very next day something came up and ruined the entire day so I was angry about it so I got to get back into it already again well just say you're gonna walk your dog just put the collar on and take him out the end of the dooryard if that's what you have to do to start it by the way Curry you'd love this one I the reason I got into business and started two businesses that I sold was because uh, when I got out of college, I was working at a retail store in, in Hartford, Connecticut, and I received a letter in the mail saying that my name would be, it came, uh, come to their attention as somebody that had leadership qualities and blah, blah, blah. And I went to a meeting at Holiday Inn. I joined a network marketing company. Now, this is back in 1972. I paid $3,200 to join, all right? And the company got shut down within a year. And, but it gave me the personal growth because I was never exposed to books. I mean, a positive thinking book, never exposed to it. And it exposed me to positive thinking books. I did pretty well in the company for a short period, in a short period of time, but it gave me the skills to start my own business. And so, and, and I later found out that this particular person sent out a thousand letters. I was the only one to respond. I, I will tell you, and I, I did a Facebook Live earlier about that specific thing about how I truly believe that network marketing in general is more about personal development than anything else. And just to, I, I want to do this real fast while you guys are still on here. Just to clarify with what he just said, this is just the last year of my life. <laughs> so I can, I can say that I've dove into personal development to become uh, the person, the leader, the, so, um, but you got, this, this is awesome. George, your vision for what you've, what you've created here with Jim is truly, truly fascinating for those of us who want to try to help everybody. I, I will tell you the st reason why I said I, I totally messed it up. At the, you know, I got off the boat. I got excited. I read this book. I read Kevin Marino's uh, uh, Shut Up and Textbook back to back. And I believe those two books to get combined are gold. Like is if you can take this consistent pattern of texting and shutting up at the same time over and over and over again, you're going to win. I, I think that that's a, a consistent action. So I, I come back with this idea to help everybody to do this and to, to start this consistent action. And then the very next thing out of my mouth is, okay, we're going to do a blitz. <laughs> like the very next thing. So my buddy called me and said, listen, you just told everybody who's going to do one thing. And then you tell them that we're going to do 11 presentations a day for 30 days. What, which one is it? And I said, well, you have to, you have to go <laughs> after everybody, right? You have to help the ones at, the, at one level. And then you have to help the 20 percenters who want to win. So it's like, you have to have that fine balance of, uh, working with everybody. I did a 30 day blitz once for one day. I, I, I will tell you, and I, I, we told George this, we actually started this business, a Servio, with 27 days in a row of five presentations a day. And now we have over 100 people lined up to do um, 
over 11 presentations a day for 30 days. So this is, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a nightmare situation, but we get to help a lot of people. And so, but anyways, getting, you know, here's, the, here's the one is, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, if my 80% personality, which is, which has a tough time looking at that degree of activity for that length of time, I'm going to, I'm going to self-select out. I, I can't, I, I'm not going to be, I, I look at that. And then my fear is if that's what I have to do to be successful, I, this is going to be a tough business for me. And so I think the key is just the repetition of message that, you know, I'm consistent. Sometimes I do a great deal of activity. Sometimes I do a lesser amount, but I'm always moving forward. And so that there's a door open for me that says, listen, you might be terrified or just feel completely incapable of doing, of joining us in this blitz, but participate at the level that you can, and it's still going to work. You know, you just have to show up in the, in the way that you can show up. I was, I was telling Jim, I was thinking of a cartoon that, of a 10 story building and the leaders up there at the 10 story building. And there's a whole line of people at the ground floor and he's got the door open. Say, so why don't they come in? And the reason why is because we don't see a way in. We're not at that level. We can't see it. So our whole goal is that is, is to help that 80% that find a way in just the, just a ground floor entrance into this. And over time we'll help you, you know, we can help you up to the 10th floor, but let's meet you where you are right now. And the one thing I'd add, Curry, and, and by the way, you, you make me tired just watching you. And uh, I mean, you're on, I mean, all the things you do to support your team, kudos. I mean, you're, you're the top 3%. There's no question about it. I, I, as we have said before, I'd love to have you on my team. And, uh, uh, but it's, uh, if anybody needs any advice or help from my perspective, uh, I charge very little, none, it's no charge. If I can help anybody, just you know, email me, private message me, whatever. I spend a little bit of time with. I see one guy on the phone uh, over in New Zealand. We spoke uh, for you know, uh, you know, quite a bit yesterday. So um, if if I can help anybody whatsoever, please don't hesitate because we want to show that our concept will will help the eighty percent, and in some cases, the you know, we can bring it up to you know, 97% of the people, because it's so needed as a, uh, you know, as a leader, we want to help everybody, as you know, some people you just have to, you know, reach out differently to, and uh, just, this is an alternative. And be careful contacting Jim, you will get brownies, uh, be careful, I mean, those brownies are delicious. <laughs> and never sent me brownies, that's what Oh my, yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in trouble. Uh, and, and by the way, just to clarify for, for those of the, those who I do scare away by our massive action, uh, the, the blitz isn't just me. So now it's been divided into people and, and it's actually designed because it's online where um, the daily consistent action of inviting, you just pick a time of the day and invite for one of the presentations. So there's always going to be team support to help you build your business. And that, that's what we wanted to do was a consistent, um, even more consistent than what we, we'd been doing. And, and I, guys, I, I, let's, I'm just gonna wrap this up because I, I don't wanna take up too much of your time. Um, and you guys are fabulous. I, I think both of you uh, have, have touched my life, given me this information, allowing me to continue growing as a, as a, as a builder, as a, as a person. And, you know, I, I hope to continue to apply this in my business and in my, in, in my family's life to, you know, stick around, to live longer, be healthier, and uh, go on more adventures with my family. So, uh, George, do you have anything else you want to wrap it up with? I just, uh, I just encourage anybody who has, has seen this now a couple of times or listened to it, just begin. Just take this, just take whatever the step it is that you need to take, just start and don't don't let the clock hit midnight tonight without, without doing that. Just start. And I'd just like to add, uh, go walk your dog. <laughs> well, she's out there barking right now. She's barking right hear, now. I can hear, I can hear. What do you call her, Patriot? 
No, no, we, no, that, that is definitely not what we're going to call it. By the way, by the way, as a massive fan with an autographed picture of Joe Flacco over my family, by the way, I still think Tom Brady is probably the greatest quarterback of all time. So I'm just going to put, put that out there. What a great note to end on. Yeah, right. Hey, guys, thank you so very, very much for your time. You guys are wonderful people and a blessing to me. So uh, I, I can't wait to meet up with both of you again. And, George, feel free to hang out and call me anytime, man. Okay, I'll do it. All right. All right. Guys, thank you for being here. Good night, everybody.